More and more, the issues that influence our society are spaces that exist beyond the physical realm. Art and technology has opened our eyes to virtual spaces where new ideas can be experienced. But how are artists bringing these worlds into our everyday lives? The word system means something different to many different people. There's systems everywhere. Some of those systems are tangible, we can see them, we can interact with them. Other of those systems are invisible. We know that they actually work to influence our lives, but we can't necessarily touch them or feel them or even know them. For me, a system itself is fundamentally about the relationships between what oneself experiences in a certain environment and as well as the relationships that happen outside of that environment. I use data as a pigment and paint the thinking brush that is assisted by artificial intelligence. We let buildings to dream and hallucinate and create art for anyone, any age and any background. The main questions I think they're probably that make sense for everyone is what does it really mean to be a human in the 21st century? We are living in these incredibly complex systems that are bigger than us. They are learning everything about us. So I think bringing awareness to technology and its ramifications is very important. But I think in this trajectory, we are not trying to create ramifications or fears. We are trying to find what else we can do with that. For Disney Hall Dreams project, I think this was my very first inspiration about near future. What will happen if a building can dream? Like, can it learn? Can it remember? We took all this enormous information, we applied complex AI algorithms and asked the question, what happens if AI goes to a concert? So we are trying to challenge our audience from, again, without any bias, let them to start dreaming, imagining with the systems to learn better and eventually dream better. I think one of the most important objectives of our work is first of all understand that common language that is for anyone, any age, and any background. I do not believe art only belongs to galleries and museums. It is a two 21st century idea. You open a door, behind that door there is art. I don't think that's, <laughs> that will be the most brightest idea for humanity. I see the arts and many of the amazing artists that are working at the forefront of arts and social justice using advanced technologies. These conversations about change are really prevalent and they're everywhere. We're creating spaces to propose new ways of being and new ways of intervening and writing ourselves into our future. I think that in the future you'd expect to see aesthetic practice invading spaces that are completely unpredictable. Breaking out of the gallery, being presented in courts, on the streets and in our institutions in a much more forceful way. We're going to be governed and we're going to be surveyed and we're going to be targeted by increasingly more sophisticated technologies. But each one of those technologies, we would try to find the potential to subvert it, to turn it around and to do justice with it, whether it is machine learning, virtual reality, immersive environments, or artificial intelligence. My work is about creating hybrid realities. I mix uh, virtual, augmented, and other realities with the physical realm, and I'm interested in exploring the impact of technology in human behavior and our surroundings. TS DOMS explores power dynamics between the physical and the virtual worlds, and the work immerses the user into a simulation in which they are transported into an unknown location and they are confronted with a crowd of humanoid clones. It aims to question the relationship between physical and virtual worlds and how it can be overcome. The fictional worlds that I create in Clon, they're based on these ideas of moving away from the current systems we have in place, moving away from capitalism, from borders, from patriarchy, from stereotypes. Within my work, I constantly create characters in which they then tell their stories. I don't like to speak for other people. And within my latest work, it was a mix of things. I create this character who goes on this journey. So I feel like I don't like to speak for other people, but I feel like I maybe draw 
stories or experiences or journeys and then incorporate that into a storyline which then these characters then tell. I try to think about equity instead of equality. So equality is obviously about fairness and equality for all, but at the same time, it doesn't really um, bring in needs. And I feel like within society where there's a biased allocation of care and privilege, I think people can be treated completely equal, but they're still treated differently by the structure of society. It's about highlighting these inequalities and then also trying to come up with active solutions to change them. Equality or inequality is just a matter of a chance for people to contribute to democratic process through their voice. In Iraq, we are allowed to have guns, but we are not allowed to have cameras. So I feel my camera is my gun and I will show to the world what's going on there. What kind of media projects should be developed to help people to start listening to each other? To create conditions for people to focus and listen to what minorities want to say. We have to really make extraordinary effort. There has to be some kind of special magic to it. In terms of threats to identity, there, there are many, particularly in relationship to things like gender and race and health. And I think it's important for artists to think about questions around shifting identities and shifting ideas of how identity is constructed through technology and go into works of art which force them to confront those questions in some ways. Sanctum was a 18 screen installation with cameras and audio. And as people would approach the facade of the building, they would start hearing sounds, almost like whispers of people talking, telling stories. And then they'd eventually see themselves on some of these screens alongside other people who were of similar demographic to them. And it's a work that, that's really thinking about public space and surveillance and thinking about social media platforms and where your data is being kind of crunched and manipulated and exploited. We have this kind of new notion of, uh, of what it means to be in public. As technology has become more sophisticated, it has given us insight into new realities. But how are artists using these insights to predict the future? Will we be able to communicate with other species? Will we make the invisible visible? Will we be exploring art and technology on other planets or in new dimensions? In the future, we need to be tuned to the way in which art, science, law and politics could actually morph together and build a practice in which the borders between those fields is eroded, in which we work together, in which we think tactically about how best to achieve the aims, the social and political aims for justice that we are fighting for. I think there's no question that biotechnology will become a much more present part of our lives. I would really like to put forward this kind of more utopic vision of that future where we utilize biotechnologies for getting past these identity concepts that split us apart, where we move past sexism and racism and kind of think of biotechnology as a way of coming closer to each other. I believe that the role of the artist and an aesthetic to actually understand that aesthetics is not a field in itself. Aesthetic is a dimension of many other practices. And I think we need to absolutely walk out of the designated spaces into which we were pushed and in, in, into the pigeonholes we were classified in. Find other ways and other media to expose our work. Work together with scientists, with lawyers, with communities uh, in order to pursue um, the goals that I think every aesthetic practitioner has, and this is to change the world in which we live in. I think that what the future holds for art, that a lot of artists will start thinking about the invisible and not just what can be rendered visible and on the surface. I think that artists will be shifting away from traditional mediums like paint. Communities and people are becoming more and more aware of like the systems in place that are not beneficial to us at all. So I think artists have a responsibility to bear witness and tell people about this in whichever kind of medium that they choose to. Thinking about what art might look like in 50 years, I hope it doesn't look like what we think of as art today, because if it does, then in some ways, you know, we, we've got a lag between society and the art that gets made in response to it. Art will become invisible. I'd like to be the first DJ on like the rings of Saturn. I would be able to 
actually communicate with plants. Having conversations with songbirds and humpback whales. I want art to look and feel like something I can't even imagine. There are going to be flotillas of artists and communities living on the water. Tons of DIY boats both thriving and sinking as we live in an ever more watery world. Art will take an increasing social role as capitalism declines. The act of art making, expression, storytelling are going to be the salvations of ever increasing suffering communities. I've been looking into black quantum futurism and basically the coupling up of explorations of blackness with quantum physics and also exploring time travel and collapsing time to a specific or desired space time, which I think is super, super interesting. And I think that line of thinking is um, something that might help to unlock new avenues of exploration. In 50 years time, we may not have headsets anymore. They might exist as part of our vision units that we have in our eyes. I find that both fascinating and scary. It could allow us to travel through time and space in ways that we have not even imagined. In 50 years, what I would want to see is art that breaks the boundary between the imagination and what we call the real world. I don't simply just want a, a robot to comfort me or bring me medicines. What I want is to be taken on an artistic exploration of what it's like to be a robot, to take me into virtual lands, help me understand perhaps what it's like to be certain animals. Art will be living in our consciousness. So I do not believe that the retina quality of life will be as important in post-human reality. And in that universe, quantum computing will be most likely very functional. And I think eventually we will be playing with reality as a material. I think that art will be more and more different fields. Art is about feeling competent enough to participate in the making of tomorrow. And most importantly, art is also about imagination. Right? It's about the imaginary future. It's about hope. A German, famous German painter said, Art is the highest form of hope. Art and technology provides the tools for future generations to examine the world around them and the crises on the horizon. Next time, we'll meet the 12 artists using art and technology to look inward, posing new questions about the way we think and how we live.